All right, we're going back to Hollywood, California on the set of 20th Century Fox. And we're going to take a look at Star Wars again with one of the stars, Carrie Fisher, lovely lady. I really flipped for her. She's a, she's going to be a big star. Let's go back to 20th, watch. Hi, Princess. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. This is I'm... Carrie Fisher. You know what bothers me seeing you actually sitting here talking? I remember when you were born. I'm beginning to feel really I old. I remember that. I remember when you were, it was 1950, that was a big event. 56? Yeah, 1956. It was in all the newspapers and it was on television, Eddie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds' daughter. And now she's all grown up, which makes us all feel a lot older. My parents feel the same way. I would imagine they do. You said your dad just saw the movie. Yes, he saw it. We're talking about Star Wars, in case anybody wants to know. What did he think of it? Oh, he loved it. Well, he has to love it because you're in it. I mean, he's he not going to come home and he say... He was furious at me that I didn't tell him that it was great. Why really? didn't you tell me? You know, he, he sort of... Science fiction, he, you know, he didn't... Is this a sleeper movie? I don't think so, because there's been a lot of... A lot of press on yeah, it. It hasn't been around that long. Well, it's been sort of in the making for about four years. It's going to be a cult film. You know that. It's going to be around a long time. And you can already do it. I'm just... I want to see a sequel now. I mean, I've already seen the first one. I want the sequel. I want sequel. to see a sequel, too. <laughs> I'll go with you when it comes out. I'm ready. No, because actually, Darth Vader, right, at the he's, end... He's alive. He doesn't get killed. He goes away, so they left it wide open for a sequel, and you're still around, and Mark is still around. Let's go back and talk about some. I'm going to show a film clip in a minute, and you can see some of the characters. But let's talk about one time in England when you went out to dinner, or was it lunch, with lunch. some of the actual characters. Well, that was the whole... When I read the script, I couldn't imagine the lunches. I thought, yeah. you're going to go out to luncheon with people that are 32 inches tall. Right. There were two, two uh, very small men in the robot, in R2-D2, mm -hmm. and some of the other... The little robot robots. becomes so real that when you you got to see it with an audience. Oh, yeah. If you saw it in a screening room by yourself the first time, it wouldn't have the same effect. Well, I never knew that R2 was... Mm, right. Like, last he come home. You was, start understanding that yeah. dumb robot. I mean, you really know what he's going to say. Yes. And if you would have been killed in it, which came close a couple of times, I'm sure the audience would have gone, gee, that's too bad. But we still have R2. But the little thing gets just an arm or something hurt, and everybody goes, oh. I'm sorry to hear that. I would hope that there would be more kind of... There was a great deal of identifying with, with the mechanical objects in it. Oh, I know. They loved them, and the, and the Wookiee. I hope the Wookiee gets the girl in the sequel. I'd like to see that, yeah. <laughs> the you Wookiee know, gets I, the girl? Yeah, that's I'd like to see I'm that, too. To see. That's going to change the rating probably slightly, though. To G. To G, yeah. It's a PG rating. Why yes. did it come to a PG instead of a G? I think because of this, you know, there's the severed arm. Yeah, a little the, violence in it. And I thought it's because the tension level for very, Maybe very that was little it. kids, very but short But there was kids. no sex ever? Well. There was no... Well, I mean, no, you know, no it's very nice. No, a little not. kiss on the cheek really isn't terribly outrageous no, anymore. Nothing longer than a 30-second kiss. That was not it. Not even that long. Not even that long. Your first, well, actually, you had it. You, you had a love scene once before in another movie. Which, off camera. Yeah. Oh, off camera. <laughs> no, no. No, no, I'm talking about shampoo. <laughs> right. No, but there was no, I mean, I, you never actually saw me. You didn't, really, no. No, I just well, propositioned him and then I see. That they cut. Off it went. Uh, back to where we were again. There was no, there was no vile language in it. I mean, there was nothing. It was a perfectly adult kids movie that everybody... You could put it on TV next week. I hope they would. I wish they would. I'd like to see it again. <laughs> then I could no, tape it. No, it's better in 70 millimeter. Yeah. Spectacle. You, it would have to be. The sound was sensational. There was... Oh, yeah. That's why I want to see it in some of the theaters they have. Yeah. Talk about when you went in the restaurant one time, a Chinese restaurant in England. They didn't even notice us. I was very disappointed. The Wookiee is this had... gigantic flying carpet, basically, right? I mean, well, this huge person. And he couldn't take off. You know, he could take his head off. Yeah. But he couldn't take off his arms and everything like that. And, and he has sort of black all over his face to keep him from perspiring. It was about 105 in London. Mm. We had a heat wave. We'd all go to lunch, and I'd have my hairy earphones on yeah. with we all this strange makeup and ray guns and we'd go into the chinese restaurant and nobody actually noticed? they served us fairly quickly <laughs> maybe they, they did notice let's it, but let's take care of that cool table right away yes that who else was with you when you went out to like to, to well we would just go around the corner i guess it is a sort of the studios in a very Close small movie community to it. i guess they are maybe but that's it Used to seven England foot two is kind people. of blase about anything though they don't oh, really get look, terribly there's upset. a giant oh, good. Wookie yeah. past the tea. <laughs> no big deal. Not really know, terribly kind of different. Um, you like space things. Let me get, I, there was one thing I remember about a, a comic book that you mentioned that you had to be 18 to buy, and I'd never heard of a comic book that you had to be 18 to buy. Oh, they have some terrible ones. Leather called. Nun. Leather Nun. I drool. never heard of them. <laughs> I've never seen them before. Leather Nun? Listen. Well, you know they have these sort of 
head shops, I think they're yeah. called. And they had all these really strange comic books. Mm -hmm. I never actually read them. You just I looked just, at the covers. I sent them off to friends of mine, Leather Nun, too. Yeah. But I mean, what was it about? I don't know. You didn't just, really look at it. No, no. I, who needed to? You get past. You were too young at the time, really. I'm not 21 yet. I can't even. You're not 21 yet? That is so disgusting. Just a child. Thanks a lot. I mean, look at all this success, and you're not even 21 yet. Well, I will be really soon. Very soon. And then there's no turning back. I see. Then what are you going to do? Gamble. Gamble. No, I'm not. I... <laughs> But I don't know, there's not, not much that tw under 21-year-olds can't do. I, I suppose if not. you took me across the state line, not you personally, oh, but... I see. That, uh, you that could get in a lot of trouble. I probably could. Could not you? Not just because of the 21. Some, other yes, <laughs> my parents would kill you. A lot of people would probably say <laughs> They'd yes. they get their laser swords right and they would there. Be here. There was a light gun in there that fascinated me, too. How'd you do that? That's movie magic. I don't care about that. I want to know. Look at these things behind us. These these crazy, what are those? Hey, this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> this is the first time We're I sitting in them. Carrie's living room at home, folks. You probably Hi. think this is a soundstage, and this is no. the way she lives. They, I think they probably superimposed a negative yeah. of the... Uh, that was good. Over. I like that. But I, I, listen, I want to know how they did the chess game. I don't oh. know how they... That was, that was good, too. Yeah, that was a like very unusual... Too. Little real things that were jumping each other and... Each other the there. imagination that, was That wasn't just, even in the script. I, really? That stunned me. I did, I'd never seen I'd it. I'd like to talk to you for about 10 minutes about things that weren't in the script that actually went into <laughs> that movie. There were, no, there, they only did cut, I think, one scene. You're really? not missing anything. You've got to have been nothing. some ad-libbing in there, though, where you guys just had a good time with it. Just kind of screaming in the garbage room a lot. Yeah. Nothing. That was a good one, too. Everybody fell into the garbage. But I noticed when you came out of the garbage, you still looked pretty immaculate. Well, I did find that a little the, bit the, hard to believe. Well, you remember... Uh, Lana Turner and all those people falling asleep with lashes True, and makeup. True, that's right. It's the a old film Hollywood. in the old style, you know, yeah. the whole spirit of it and also Came the makeup. <laughs> terrible garbage dump and Carrie looked just as lovely as she just did going in. My hair pulled together. Well, you couldn't have a princess covered with slime. I mean, nobody's going to follow well, a princess. I guess you could, but who wants to follow a princess covered? If you got a boyfriend, we should find out about that. Uh, Somebody serious in your life? No one's serious. <laughs> Not now. Not, not no, you I, 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 why? You I just, no, I just wondered. Like I mean, this is showbiz. This is oh, what yes. the folks want to know. Date life. They want to yeah. know? Mm -hmm. I'm not talented. Tiger Teen Magazine or something like that. They write stories about you, outrageous things. No, I'm, I'm open to dating suggestions. Are you? you know? Uh-huh. Anyone from well, Cleveland or... Anybody out in Cleveland is watching right now is interested. We'll, we'll give them your phone give number. Give my phone number. It's written on... <laughs> A lot of the uh, ladies... We don't want to hear where it's written. Oh, we got to go. Okay. We'll be back in a minute. All right, we're going to sit down and talk this time to Harrison Ford, who plays Solo. And it was really one of the first big roles he's ever had. And he was very nervous for the interview. Keep that in mind as we do this. Watch. Okay, we're sitting talking once again about Star Wars with Harrison Ford, who actually in the movie was much bigger, I thought. Bigger than Yeah. Well, bigger than what? You were larger in the movie than you are sitting here. Now, you're about my size, and in the movie, you were gigantic. Well, Mark Hamill is shorter than you are. That's true. Mark is small, but he... he didn't it appear to be terribly big in the movie. Is that a special effect they did for you to make you look larger than life? No, I am no, larger than life. You really are Absolutely. larger than You really did, though. You look bigger. You look like, you know, the big crusader that would come along at the end and save everything. We all knew you were going to come back. Well, you that's the way leave. it was written. I mean, it's yeah. an actor-proof part, in a way. It is? Isn't it? I didn't know there were such things as actor-proof parts. Oh, yeah. Unless you're good, you could still, you know. They rarely come out. along, but yeah. with a guy like Lucas in a script like this, it's hard to How old miss is the intention. I think he's about 33. Going on to what, about 14, right? <laughs> he really is. You gotta be a kid to put a movie like this together in your heart. And you, you gotta, gotta be a little be bit of a kid a, to be in it. Yeah, but you gotta be, have a, a real sure. lot of sophistication to yeah. this kid. This is not just but your ordinary all, did kid. Did you have that kind of an imagination when you were a kid with, with sci-fi? Were you into no. that kind of thing? No, I never was. You weren't? No. What did you like as a kid? Hot dogs. Hot dogs? Yeah. Girls? You were an American graffiti. No, yeah, I mean a little bit. Yeah. You were an American graffiti. I was. And you were, I'm trying to remember, in the graffiti, were you a punk? Kind of a... Uh, well, yeah, kind of a punk. Rolled up sleeves. No, uh, no, that was, you're talking about, you're thinking of Paul Lamatt. I was the guy in the white cowboy hat. Uh, okay, I remember. The challenger. What were you hat. like when you were a kid? Did you grow up in a small town, or where did you grow up? You no, know, I grew up in Chicago. Well... In, in Chicago, and then in the suburbs of Chicago. I have a younger brother yeah. and an ordinary family. And Had an uh, average, every day? Hey, just an ordinary girlfriend guy. Girlfriend that you took to the movies once in a while, and... Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. How did you get from there to where you are now? 
In other words, you grew up in an average family, had no showbiz background, right? Well, my father had, had been a radio actor, but when I was growing up, and uh, he was uh, a writer and an uh, advertising executive. Mm -hmm. I didn't really get into acting until my junior year in college. Is that what you wanted to do? Were there other things along the way? You no, I never thought of it, one point or a lawyer Well, or? I studied philosophy and English in, yeah. in college, not knowing what I was going to do with that. I mean, it's I had no plans go for the future. Point, yeah. Yeah. Did you have any weird jobs? Did you have to do a lot of things to survive? You were uh, a carpenter for a while, I understand, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you any good? Yeah. Did you do work around your house? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got into it because I bought an old house and gutted it and then couldn't afford to have anybody else do the work. <laughs> so I, uh, and I wanted to get out of acting for a while. I'd been uh, six years in the business. I started out Why as a baby actor. Why would you want to get out of it? Well, I wasn't, I got, got tired in. of the system of what you had to work in or what? Well, they were tired of me. Well, you were you working know. pretty steady though. You'd done a lot, of, a lot of things. Well, I was working, I did some television and there were big holes in it. You yeah. Know? And uh, I really wasn't using myself as much as I needed to. I mean, so you I decided to, to become get a carpenter and, to use yourself more? Well, you've you got to get up early in the morning and you've got to work all day long. That's true. And when you come home, you're tired and you, you know, you feel but like it's you've not done as, something. It's not as glamorous as showbiz. Ah, <laughs> I'm not in it for the glamour. Yeah, I can see that. What about the insecurities of you? you got so. two kids, right? Yeah. That, uh, how old are they? Eight and eleven. Both boys? Both boys. Both boys. Yeah. What do they think of? Have they seen the movie? Yeah. What do they think of it all? They think it's great. Just the, the typical kid's reaction to the yeah, whole thing is absolutely. fun. absolutely. There was, there was nothing in it that kids couldn't see. No. It's one of the first times I've ever seen that from a movie that everybody could go to and nobody could really yeah, object yeah, to. Yeah, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's got to be, got to be like a big dream for you right now because, I mean, everybody in the whole country can see it. And they can all identify with you at the end coming to the rescue. You get to be the hero. I mean. That's what I mean. What more could you have? Part. That's yeah, what I mean. I see. I mean, it's written in. Nobody this could. Guy but they dislike yeah. you for a little bit. I mean, there's a while there you say, hey, the guy's really a klutz. Yeah. But you came through. So now what happens? We've seen you in a lot of other things. I don't know how many people will remember some of them, but I remember The Possessed. What else? Yeah. The Conversation. That's Francis. right. You did a thing uh, with a friend of mine, Stanley Kramer. Yeah. Who uh, did the uh, Lieutenant Kelly thing. Court Marshal Lieutenant Kelly. Did you Kelly. get to, to know him at all? Uh, Kelly? Kelly? Yeah. No, Kelly wasn't around. Uh, uh, I think Kramer met with Callie before yeah. him, but he wasn't that around was when we were shooting, no. So now what happens? Hey, I don't know. I'm, I'm uh, looking around. You don't have anything nailed down yet you want to do? You're not going to go back and no. build shelves for a while and say, hey, I don't need it now? <laughs> no, I'm going to work at my own house, try and get it together. Oh, you got a big house? No. No? Just Where an ordinary live? house in the Hollywood Hills. Do you, what do you, when you're away from all of this, in other words, you're not terribly affected by it all. It doesn't really seem to be the biggest thing in your whole life, becoming a big star. What do you do well, my pinky to, to ring relax? Isn't ready yet. Your pinky ring isn't ready yet? <laughs> what do I you do You don't have relax? all the chains around your neck and the big open shirt and all no. that? This is the first time I've actually ever worn my collar outside my jacket. Really? Yeah. Uh, what do I do to relax? Yeah, what do you do? do you... Well, I, you know, I have a wife and Chase family dogs and an ordinary or... life and yeah. friends and... I mean, hobbies, that's what I'm getting at. Are you no. a sailor, a boater, a no. swimmer, a surfer? Just hang around the house and make moves on the wife and hit the kids once in a while and that's it. Dogs, cats. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs and cats. Dogs and cats. Well, that's about it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Let's go back and talk about the movie for a okay. minute. Now we know about you. You're a pretty relaxed, average guy, right? Yeah. Just, just making an ordinary a movie, guy. Doing a... Just doing a job. Yeah. Sometimes that's hard to get across to people that you're just doing a job and that it really isn't the big Hollywood hype. No, and it's a hard it. job. Yeah, it's a lot of work, and you do a lot of... One of the things that I mentioned at the carry, I noticed, you fell into the sewer. Yeah. In the, and you came out clean as, clean as could be. There was, there was no garbage all over you. Yeah. There should have been garbage. Did you miss the garbage? I missed the garbage. I looked for the garbage as you came out, and I said, yeah. he's still perfect. Well, we mentioned it to George. George said, I'll never <laughs> notice. <laughs> uh, now, Carrie said it was... It was like the old days when the, the movie star would go to, to sleep and she'd wake up the next morning and her makeup was perfect. And nobody wakes up like that. Yeah. It was the old Hollywood thing again where everybody came out spick and span and clean as a whistle. Yeah. And you didn't get the girl or anything. No. That's, we were hoping for a while you would. The Wookiee was my favorite. The Wookiee was my friend. Yeah, the Wookiee was, actually the Wookiee was his co-pilot right. on the whole thing. And I think the Wookiee was maybe, we're trying to start an Academy Award nomination plan for him. Are you? Yeah. 
I'm going to talk I'm that sure up a lot. I'm sure it would be very gratifying. I think it would be super. The Wookiee could come down the aisle. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, people could understand those people after a while, though. Did you do that on the set at all? Understand the Wookiee? Well, not so much you mean the Wookiee, understand. but I mean all the mechanical things. They'd make their little sounds, and you begin to believe in them, and you could really understand them. Yeah. They talked in a little language that nobody... And the, that's the way it'll be. Well, I didn't work very much with robots, you know. No. The one I did work with uh, talked back to me like a regular person. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I really did. I'm glad. I hope everybody goes to see it, because it's that much fun. We're going to take a look at a quick clip from it, and then we'll come back. And so he made the jump to light speed. Great movie. It's rated PG. Mainly, it could have been a G movie, but they reasoned it out that the kids, the young kids, 16, 15, 14, will not go to see a G movie because that's too hokey. They wouldn't be caught dead there. So they made it PG. We'll come back in a minute and close it out. That's going to do it. I hope you've enjoyed our look at Star Wars last week and tonight. Next Sunday night, we'll show you a bit of uh, The Other Side of Midnight with Marie French CPA is one of our guests. So plan to join us and have a nice night.